African countries said to be optimistic to achieve Millennium Development Goals. Amazon Troop contributing countries confer in Kampala on the mission's obligations. Hello, and welcome to this edition of ETV News. I'm Aida Salamon. Ministry of Mines and Energy said the use of ethanol blended fuel was going well. The ministry disclosed over 30 million U.S. dollars in foreign exchange was saved during the previous five years due to the commencement of the fuel. With that in mind, Bischoftu saw a symposium with the intention of augmenting the production and use of ethanol blended fuel. The symposium has also emphasized boosting research activities geared towards fetching the best out of the blending system. Oromia is a vast region in Ethiopia having a variety of tourist attractions. Lake Wanchi in southwest Shoa zone of the state is one among many areas with natural beauty. Though the site is of immense attraction, the local people claim that they have not benefited a lot from community tourism because of lack of adequate infrastructure. Accordingly, they have called on the zonal administration to fulfill infrastructure for the cause. The administration has vowed to consider the demand of the public. The Millennium Development Goals Report 2013 shows Africa is optimistic to achieve education, women empowerment, and HIV, HIV AIDS and malaria prevention sectors of the goals. Ethiopia and Rwanda are among the forefront countries that are anticipated to achieve the goals. Abeta Hailu reports. The Millennium Development Goals Report 2013 shows that Africa is optimistic to achieve the MDGs, particularly in primary education, enrollment, women empowerment, and combating HIV and malaria. Manuel Lendoza is Director for Macroeconomic Policy Division in the ECM, points out the areas of progress in the continent. A lot of progress has been made in, in many areas, but I think it's no longer a secret everybody knows that uh, some African countries will not achieve some of the MDGs, you know, whether it's in terms of uh, poverty or in terms of uh, maternal health. But progress has been made in education, in fighting HIV and AIDS, in uh, women empowerment. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, examples. Ethiopia is one example where, you know, some success has been made in reducing poverty. Rwanda has also made a lot of progress. Nonetheless, progress has been slow in poverty reduction, employment and some health-related goals plus quality of social services, he said. As the MDGs are set to expire in less than two years, interventions are here and there to identify what should be included in the development agenda of the post-MDGs era. The high-level panel meeting that happened on Monday at the ECA is intended to shape Africa's post-MDG agenda. So far, Africa's priorities for the post-2015 development are said to be financing of future costs and sustaining existing processes such as Rio Plus 20. Dr. Carlos Lopez, ECA Executive Secretary, commands what needs to be done to achieve the best out of the plan. Africa needs is to articulate an aggressive industrialization drive. Africa needs more modern jobs, value addition, agricultural productivity revolution, better use of natural resources, all of which are pointing in the direction of a recomposition of Africa's GDP with a greater part for industrialization. As for Shetit Lahun, the post-MDGs seemingly give room for countries to achieve their remaining targets. The good thing this time is in the post-MDGs, they give place for and space for uh, transpiring the, the national policies and there is a room to, to integrate what has been transpired on this report to the realities of each individual country. Participants of the meeting emphasized the future development goals should be quantitative rather than being quantitative. The sixth regular session of Beneshangul Gums State Council endorsed an over 1.5 billion bir, bu billion bir budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. 
the budget has an over 37 million bur increment compared to same period last year. The appointment of Fukadu Tadese as Speaker of the Regional Council and approval of Cabinet members was part of the session. Meanwhile, the Council underscored social services delivery in the 2012-2013 fiscal year was promising compared to previous performances. Welcome back. Amazon troop contributing countries conferred in Kampala, Uganda on ways how the mission would discharge its obligations in a better way. The summit has also deliberated on future relationship of the Somali government and Amazon. Hanok Tasfai has more. Amazon troop contributing countries summit was hosted by President Yuri Museveni of Uganda, which was preceded by the meeting of foreign ministers and ministers of defense. The summit reaffirmed commitment under the African Unity and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development eager to the unity, territorial integrity, and sovereignty of Somalia. It commended the achievement of AMISOM, Ethiopia, and the Somalian National Security Forces in restoring security in Somalia. Although it has been weakened by AMISOM and Ethiopian troops, the head of state stressed that the fight against Al-Shabaab should continue to be the major focus of Somalia as it still remains a threat. Defense Minister Siraj Fargesa said Ethiopian troops have been able to seize Al Shabaab's strongholds in Somalia. Ethiopia is playing a vital role in peacekeeping mission in different African countries. Instability in Somalia could affect Ethiopia in one way or another, as the two countries are neighbors. This is why Ethiopia is taking part in peacekeeping mission, though it is not included in AMISOL. Now our peacekeeping troops are in control of place called Sector 3, where they are fighting to destroy Al-Shabaab. The meeting decided that the control of Kismayo seaport and airport should be handed over to Somalia and that AMISOM and the chiefs of defense forces of Ethiopia and Somalia should work out modalities for AMISOM multinational force to be deployed in Kismayo. Media and publicity advisor to the Prime Minister Geta Chorada said the meeting was vital to strengthen that effort in Somalia. Both Kenya and Somalia forces now have come to understand the significance of blaming each other. This meeting was a platform for them to come to the spirit of unity and cooperation to fight Al-Shabaab and build a strong viable government in Somalia. The meeting also requested Igar to meet on a quarterly basis to track progress on developments and the AU to undertake in-depth review of AMISOM. AMISOM troop contributing countries are Uganda, Burundi, Kenya, Djibouti and Sierra Leone. In fact, Ethiopia is also fighting Al-Shabaab in partnership with Somali security forces. A joint briefing session on the 12th African Growth and Opportunity Act Forum recently held in Washington, D.C. Ethiopian Ambassador to the U.S., Girma Buru, briefed the gathering on the preparations for the upcoming meeting due to happen in Addis Ababa. A ministerial forum is expected to happen from August 12th to the 13th for a high-level dialogue on the implementation of AGOA and the future of U.S.-Africa trade and economic relations. It, was, it would be preceded by programs for the private sector, civil society, and African women entrepreneurs. The African Union Commission and the Continental Council of Political Parties deliberated on how to solve election crisis. For that matter, the two have inked a memorandum of understanding to work together for the cause. The MOU is believed to capacitate political parties for the prevalence democratic rule in Africa. The South Sudanese government has begun talks with former rebels who accepted President Kiir's offer of an amnesty earlier this year. The leaders of the South Sudan Liberation Army, South Sudan Democratic Army, and South Sudan Defense Forces declared peace with the government of South Sudan as of April 26th. 
that is, following a statement by the President that all rebel commanders and their soldiers will be pardoned regardless of any crimes they might have committed during the rebellion. The former rebel groups have submitted proposals that they should be integrated in the South Sudan Army and police force. A government committee has now been set up to look into the possible modalities for integration of the ex-fighters. That is it for this edition of ETV News. I'm Ida Salomon. Have a great evening.